Are whole foods plant-based diets nutrient deficient? First of all, whole foods plant-based diets really are diets that emphasize whole foods and minimize or exclude things like animal products, dairy, and eggs. Now, you don't have to go 100% on anything. Even if you get to 80%, you can still reap the majority of the benefits. And as far as nutrient concentration and deficiency goes, let's take a quick look at what the evidence shows. First of all, when it comes to protein, the most important thing to note is you are not going to be deficient. In fact, there are Olympic level athletes, there are professional basketball players, football players, and many other people who are doing extreme sports that are doing just fine as far as protein intakes go. Omega-3 fatty acids, the most common of which people know as EPA and DHA, well, when it comes to EPA and DHA, people immediately think of fish. There's another N3 fatty acid that people don't talk about as much, and that's alpha-linolenic acid, or ALA. Now, ALA, when it hits the body, it's actually converted inside our bodies to EPA and DHA. The beauty of ALA is it's found in some really yummy and delicious foods. And what are those? flax seeds, chia seeds, camelina seeds, canola, hemp, walnuts, and even oils like flaxseed oil and other oils. So you have plenty of sources to get your omega-3 fatty acids and still be able to follow a primarily whole foods plant diet. Iron. Iron is important because when we think about omnivores and we think about meat eaters, the problem that we have with animal-based iron is the heme. Now, there's some discussion that the heme in animal-based iron may actually be associated with things like metabolic syndrome. And we'll have some talks on this in the future coming up. But with plant-based iron, the first thing to note is, is that you are going to be fine. Even though there's less than non-vegetarians, it's plenty of iron you're going to be getting from whole foods to do the job. The second is your body is remarkably efficient at upregulating and downregulating the absorption of plant-based iron whenever the need arises. So if you're iron deficient, you will actually have a much higher bioavailability of plant-based iron. Zinc plays a number of roles as far as our immune system goes and a number of other things, but the important thing about zinc is even though vegetarians and vegans may have slightly lower levels than non-vegetarians, bottom line with zinc is going to be that you're still going to be within the normal limits and the second part is if you really want to bump up the absorption of zinc you can add a little bit of citric acid and good sources of that would be things like lemon and lime which can actually help your zinc absorption and even if you're worried about things like phytic acid and so forth just a simple thing of soaking things like beans and grains and nuts and seeds can reduce the amount of phytic acid that binds to zinc and that in itself can also improve the bioavailability of zinc. Iodine. Iodine deficiency is actually very rare in this country. Most salts are iodized and there is supplementation in a number of things to prevent that. But in plant-based diets, if you're really limiting iodized salt or sea vegetables, then that's something where supplementation may be needed. And of course, vegan women of childbearing age really ought to do a little bit of supplementation with 150 micrograms per day. But an important point about salt is most people confused salt in their salt shaker as being the main contributor to the amount of salt they get in their diet. And that's not correct. Most of the salt that people get really comes from eating out fast food, junk food, processed food, foods in packages. But if you actually eat whole foods, you will get very little salt in there. So if you're getting some iodized salt in your diet in the shaker, that's really 7 to 10 percent of your total intake. Most of the intake is coming from the bad foods we eat. And that's what contributes to things like high blood pressure, strokes, heart attacks. So iodine deficiency really should not be a concern. Calcium. Calcium comes up a lot because once again, like the other vitamins and minerals, there's this perception that being on a whole foods plant-based diet, you're going to be calcium deficient. 
Now, if there's really concerns over that, then a good way to even bump up your calcium absorption can be to add some low oxalate vegetables. The reason this matters is high oxalate foods, the oxalate will bind to calcium in your gut and prevent the absorption of calcium. So if you want to minimize that very simply, have some low oxalate foods in your diet. What are those? Kale, turnip greens, Chinese cabbage, bok choy. And if you're wondering just how much of a difference it'll make, by having low oxalate foods, you can actually increase calcium absorption up to 50% versus high oxalate foods will have calcium absorption of only 5%. So a huge difference in having a little bit of the wonderful, beautiful kale as part of your everyday meals. Vitamin D. Most people that I know in my clinical practice are all vitamin D deficient. This is omnivores, vegetarians, vegans, the whole group. So if you tend to be living in the higher latitudes and especially in the winter and spring months, there tend to be more vitamin D deficiencies. Important thing to know is if you're strictly vegan, vitamin D3 can be animal or plant origin. So you want to make sure you look at the sourcing if that truly matters to you. And vitamin D2, on the other hand, is really made from UV radiation of ergosterol from yeast. The difference between D3 and D2 is important also is because most people think that if you get to very high doses, D2 may be a little bit less effective than vitamin D3. Bottom line, D3 or D2 really is about the same except for super high doses. And if you're looking to supplement, about 1,000 international units to 2,000 international units daily is really reasonable. And the best way to know is by getting a simple blood test to make sure that your levels are within the normal ranges as advised by the Institute of Medicine recommendations. Lastly is vitamin B12. B12 is a very important one because this is the one that really, if you're gonna follow a strictly whole foods plant-based diet, you might actually need to supplement with. So one big reason of course is, is that it's not found in most plant foods, but you can see nowadays, especially that most of the foods, especially on a whole foods plant-based diets are being fortified with vitamin B12. So there's a number of foods where you can find if you're a vegetarian, even having one cup of milk or one egg per day, you'll get 66% of your uh, recommended daily allowance. But if you're strictly on a whole foods plant-based diet and avoiding eggs and avoiding dairy, in that particular case, supplementation with anywhere between 1,500 or so to 1,000 micrograms is sufficient to make sure you have enough. Now. B12 is really important to understand because its deficiency can really run havoc on your body. Signs could be very insidious things like fatigue, tingling in fingers and toes, poor cognition, failure to thrive in uh, small children, for example. But long-term B12 deficiency can be even more deadly and there can be strokes, dementias, poor bone health associated with it. So B12 is probably the most important thing to make sure that you're supplementing or making sure you're getting enough fortified foods to ensure you don't run into a deficiency. So we just ran through a number of vitamins and minerals to give you an idea that if you follow a whole foods plant-based diet, aside from vitamin B12, really there isn't much to be alarmed about. And when you look at all the health benefits, including things like reversal of heart disease, improvement in diabetes, improvement in weight, you can see how it makes a lot of sense to follow this lifestyle. But one thing I, I want to make sure everybody notes is that you don't have to go 100%. I know a number of people out there recommend that it's either 0 or 100% and you can't do anything in between. I don't believe that. Even if you can do some, even if you say, look, I'm not going to give up egg whites and I'm not going to give up, you know, going out one time a month to do something. That's okay. And the reason is, is because we want to create an atmosphere where we're inclusive, where we allow people to reap the benefits and we don't look down upon them if they don't hit those. 
Thanks for watching. I look forward to your comments.